The false work used was another outstanding feature of this project. The spectacle of thousands of units of slender, graceful tubular scaffolding, erected similar to a child's tinker toy set, yet supporting some 700 tons of concrete per span, created widespread interest. And in the beginning, it caused some serious second thoughts on our part. Careful analysis and experience demonstrated that it is entirely adequate, as well as extremely convenient, both from the standpoint of construction and engineering. The use of the tubular scaffolding resulted in a neat and orderly false work. Installation was rapid and required a minimum of equipment. The frames are light in weight and the timber caps and stringers are short enough to permit manhandling during the removal operation. Forms for the bottom slab of the superstructure were paneled units prefabricated in the contractor's yard. After they were in place, bridge department engineers cooperated with the contractor's men and set the soffit to proper grade. Our innovation, the Unipod, was used to set up the instrument in a firm and secure location on a two-inch column dowel. Signals were given by tapping a code on the soffit to be heard by workmen underneath, turning the screw jack. With sills transmitting concentrated frame loads to the girders, the lower deck supported the upper deck during construction. Over 30 spans of this false work were in various stages of use on the job at all times. Here, with the help of some time-lapse photography, we are able to show a portion of the removal operation. With the soffit forms in place and graded, and the side forms installed, the steel men moved in and placed reinforcing for the bottom slab and girder stems. Each construction operation for the superstructure we are viewing and discussing involves a hinge-to-hinge -hinge unit consisting of three 80-foot spans, or over 13,000 square feet of deck area. Carpenters moved right in and formed the girder stems using prefabricated panel units. One key to this successfully efficient operation was that just the right kind and amount of material was at the right place at the right time. Certain upper deck caps in this structure were excessively long for ordinary construction due to severe skews or spanning emerging lower deck ramp. These caps were pre-stressed. This installation consisted of 45 1 and 1 8 inch diameter high tensile steel rods enclosed in flexible conduit for post tensioning. The small tubes connected to the enclosures are for intrusion of grout after stressing and anchoring. Rods flexible conduit and grout tubes extend through the forms for later pre-stressing operations.
Let's take a look at pre-stressing operations. The concrete has attained the required compressive strength of 5,000 pounds per square inch. An electric hydraulic pump operated a jack of 60 ton capacity. The jack, equipped with calibrated gauges, was used to stress the rod. Here you see the jack attached to a rod. Note the white reference mark at the left end of the rod. A predetermined elongation was the measure of pre-stressing force. Elongation was dependent on the length of cap and varied between three and a half and five and one half inches. Gauge pressure was used as a confirming check. After the rods were stressed, the excess was burned off to permit encasing the ends in concrete caps. <laughs>